just uh, rolling through downtown on a Saturday night. Uh, the police department, of course, uh, gets great kudos for that. They, they arrested 11 of them in 48 seconds after the 911 call. Uh, so the budget delivery on May 18th was sort of a non-event after all that. I have a, I've come up with a new policy. Uh, I should have learned this a, long, a lot longer, Cal, being in this profession. I, I now actually, uh, on, on some weekends, I'm going to turn my phone off and have somebody else on call. And that's after, that's after five successive hair-raising weekends. Uh, because every, every one of these milestones uh, was a major media event. Um, we um, uh, heard it on both sides. We were withholding information, or we were too, the attorneys were telling us we're too loose with information. Uh, we were defaming character, or with, we're withholding public records. So it was, uh, it was a, a new practice for me to say, effective Friday afternoon, I'm going to go up to Blowing Rock and don't even call me. <laughs> so, I've been 24-7 since um, cell phone, before cell phones were invented, so um, it was a, a new thing for me. I'm actually quite relaxed today. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it again. But uh, I'm here today to tell you a, a little bit about the finances of the city, uh, to build upon the last presentation I gave you with, where I think I predicted that things are going to be pretty rocky for a couple of years. And We'll also leave plenty of time for question and answers, um, because there may be some other things, like several of these things I've just mentioned, that would be of interest to you. So, to, to do my assigned work, the highlights of the city finances are that, indeed, uh, in the, the ripple effect of the Great Recession uh, has hit uh, Asheville um, in, a, in a proportional fashion. I, I, I'm not going to say um, we're as bad off as uh, municipalities in Arizona, Florida, California, Nevada, places like that, which suffered, uh, are suffering immensely from the uh, real estate bubble. We aren't suffering to the same extent as communities that uh, were aggressive in the last five years uh, in issuing debt and, and leading uh, into uh, major capital improvement programs. Uh, we are not uh, suffering as much as those uh, communities that uh, significantly expanded their workforce and their service levels, uh, opened new facilities, or annexed uh, well beyond their means to incorporate those new areas. So the, um, and we're not suffering as much as those uh, communities that did not have healthy reserves, rainy day funds, uh, balances set aside to deal with these kind of inevitable um, setbacks in the economy. So that's the good news. Um, the challenges that we're facing are of two natures. One is the short term, just how do we pay the bills, avoid layoffs, keep services going. The other is of a structural nature. And I'd like to talk about that for just a moment. Um, I've been communicating um, to the people I work for, the mayor and council, for a number of years now, that uh, the city of Asheville has an underlying structural financial problem. And in December, uh, we issued a uh, Financial Crossroads 2010 paper. How many of you are familiar with that paper? Very good. I would suggest um, that you share, there's a, there's a link on the city's website where you can go to that. Uh, it ties back, if you search uh, strategic goals of the city council, you'll see that there's a paper attached to that. But the highlights uh, of that paper are that uh, 50 years ago, Asheville was a city of 60,000 and a county of 75,000 people. How many of you experienced that? We're here and know that commu the community I'm talking about. A couple of them. Well, what is Asheville today in that context? It's a city of 75,000 in a region of a half million, a county of a quarter million, and yet this is still the hub, right? It's still the economic center. 
the challenges that go with that, of being that hub, that economic center, when um, fall on uh, the city just like they would on you uh, when you have relatives here for the, for the holidays or over the summer. Um, when you have a, a big gathering at your house on Thanksgiving, isn't that when the garbage disposal gets, breaks down or the toilet backs up or um, the water line breaks? You know, that's or the, the refrigerator bonks or the extra loads of clothes put the, the dryer on the blink. When the fights go on between, actually, actually, yeah. There's a when you have when you have um, thirty anarchists running through town, you've got you've got a little tension there too. So what what happens when um, we continue to be the economic center for the region is that we have a much higher uh, level of service demands, not only for the the police when the anarchists are in town, but the the infrastructure as well. So what what we've tried to do over the last couple of years is make um, folks aware, and so I'm using this opportunity to tell you as well, that 75% of the, we, we do have a strong economic engine, but 75% of the county sales tax is generated in Asheville. What percentage of that is retained in Asheville? Anybody want to make a guess? 25%. 25 percent. 75 generated, 25 returned. Where's the rest go? It goes, remember it's a town of 75 and a quarter million dollar community. It goes out to pay for volunteer fire departments, the school districts, the, the urban sprawl that we have experienced over the last uh, few decades. So that's where that's going. The city does not have um, and fought a valiant fight, I think, to get a fair share of, of having, for having a differential water rate. Uh, other communities throughout the state of North Carolina uh, have a significant portion of their budget coming from differential water rates. And that's an inducement so that you won't end up in the situation where you have your city of 75,000 surrounded by a quarter million people who are on the wa water and sewer systems without paying differential rate. They have incentives in other communities to come into the city and to contribute their property taxes for those services. And to, uh, if not, they pay a differential water rate and eventually want to come into the city by virtue of, you know, why are we paying two, three times what it costs? We're just across the street. Why don't we go in the city? Well, there's not the incentive to do that here. If uh, we had the differential rate, which is the norm in the state, that would be $8 million a year to the city's budget. But we don't. Uh, we have the lowest hotel motel tax in the city. So unlike Wilmington, which uses that and is currently building a nice new um, convention center, civic center, we're struggling to maintain the facility we have and put a million dollar roof on it so that it doesn't leak. And that's, that's a conscious choice. Your legislature has decided to keep our hotel motel tax the, the lowest in the state for a city of our nature. And um, that also, puts a lot of pressure on um, the city as well to deliver those services. So you understand the structural imbalance there where we are a full service city with a high level of service and significant maintenance needs um, and very high expectations as a community. You know, people want, people do not want Walmart level services in Nashville. Does anybody want Walmart level services in Nashville? You want quality. So that's where we stand on a long-term basis. Our interest in addressing that, those structural issues are we need to manage expectations. People need to understand we're not in a position to move a lot of the parks, the greenways, um, the, the level of sidewalks, street improvements, many of the things that we'd like to be in a position to do. We're just financially handcuffed because we don't have the means to do it. So. What are we doing about that? The mayor and council are reaching out to Buncombe County, they're reaching out to the legislature, and asking if there are ways to partner. 
other, way, other ways to fund these services.